Hello and welcome to this special episode of our Train Route Building tutorial series. In this series I'm using TRS-19, but most things also apply to other trains versions. In this video I'm covering several points which were suggested to me by a viewer over on Discord. I'm covering how to use UK color light signals and their aspects, UK semaphore signals and their aspects, gantries and catenary. So let's begin by loading our route. But in this case, I'm going to load the default session, because I've already prepared some things. So, let's talk about the UK color light signals first. Over here, I've put down some signals to demonstrate the base aspects that these signals can display. Over on the leftmost track, we have a signal with two lights, a green light and a red light. This signal can only display either clear, so go ahead at track speed, or stop. As you can see here, this signal is displaying the green aspect, and the next one is displaying the red aspect. On the middle track, we have a three light signal. This can inform the driver about a red signal one signal in advance. As you can see here, this signal is displaying the clear aspect, so continue at track speed, the next signal is displaying a single yellow light, which means the next signal is red. As you can see, the next signal is red. And over here on the rightmost track, we have a signal with four lights. This can warn the driver about a red signal two signals in advance. So we've got a green signal, so proceed at track speed. Then we've got a signal displaying two yellow lights, which means that the signal after the next signal is displaying a danger aspect. And as you can see, the next one is displaying the one yellow light aspect, which means the next one's red, and the next one indeed is red. There is one more UK color light signal which I've put down here, and that is this dwarf signal. This dwarf signal also has three lights, so it can warn the driver about a red signal, one signal in advance. Dwarf signals are used mainly in yards or by sidings, basically anywhere where you either don't need the visibility of a masted signal, or there's just not enough space for a masted signal and you don't want to put in gantry. Okay, with the basic aspects of UK color light signals out of the way, let's talk about feather signals and theatre signals. I've placed this locomotive on this track so that these signals would recognize that there's a train approaching and display an aspect other than red. So, if we go over here, you can see that this is just our basic three light color signal. But on top, there are some diagonal lights. At the moment, these are off. This is called a feather signal. This is used to inform the driver about whether an upcoming junction is set straight ahead or is set to use the diverging track. At the moment, this junction we have here is set to go straight. But if I switch this junction, you can see that the feather lights up, indicating that the junction is set to diverge. Now I'm quickly going to demonstrate how to set this up in trains. So first I'm going to add a straight piece of track, and I'm going to add a junction going left, and a junction going right, so that I can demonstrate both. Now, the first thing we need is a signal, so I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to get the signal that I was using before, using the get object tool. This asset is called sig 3 abr post std rhs and I'm actually going to switch over to the left hand side one. If you want to use the same assets I'm using here, I've made a list of all the assets in the description of this video. So, now I'm going to place the signal down over here before the junction. At the moment, it's still just a normal signal. This is because the signal hasn't found any feather markers to indicate that it should be a feather signal. So let's add some feather markers. I've already put these assets in my picklist, so I'm going to get them from there. Let's put down the straight feather marker first. This asset is called sig t feather straight. Now, if I place this on the straight track, you can see an arrow going straight ahead with the feather light indicators on it. This marker indicates to the signal that if the junction is set in such a way that the signal following the track finds this marker, it should not display a feather aspect. Now let's place the diverging one, in this case the left one. So I'll just place this over here, and as you can see the signal has not yet got its feather indicators. What I need to do to fix this is I need to place some more signals over here so that the track doesn't just end. So if I place a signal over here, and I place some over here as well. You can see that the signal doesn't yet have the feather indicator. 
So I need to go over to the Edit Properties tool, left click on the signal and click Update Now. As you can see, the feather indicator has now been added, but it isn't lighting up even though the junction is set to go off to the feather side. Well, this is because the signal is currently displaying the danger aspect. To get the feather to light up, we need to put down a train so that the signal displays an aspect other than the danger aspect. So I'm just going to add a bit more track. And then I'm going to place down a loco. As you can see, the signal immediately lit up along with the feather. Now if I switch this junction, you can see that the feather goes off. If I switch it back, the feather goes on. Now let's go back over to our demonstration track and cover theater signals. So I'm just going to reset this junction. And as you can see, this signal, instead of a feather, has these two displays on top. These are called theater signals. They are used to tell drivers which track the junctions are set to lead the train to. So for example, if you have a station with 10 platforms and the train has to go over multiple junctions to reach a specific platform, then feather signals, the ones we covered before, wouldn't be that useful. Because they would just say, OK, you're going to turn left now, then you're going to turn right, then left again, and the driver would have no idea which track he or she is going to. So instead, theatre signals are used. Because theatre signals can display the specific identifier of a track. In this example, this junction is set to go straight, so when this signal checks for theatre markers, it checks along the track and finds these two. These markers are actually two separate markers. The left marker is displaying a 1, as you can see I can move it independently. The right marker is displaying an M, which as you can see I can also move independently. And so the theatre signal is displaying 1M. Now if I switch this junction, the signal changes to only displaying D. This is because the signal now checks along the path, which goes to the right, and then to the left, and it finds the letter D. Now this is only the left marker, which means it only displays the first character. Now, if I wanted this to instead display the D on the right display of the signal, I would need to place down the right-hand side marker. So I'm actually going to do this to demonstrate. So I'm going to get this marker, and as you can see, it's called Sig T Theatre First D. This indicates that this marker is for the first display and then that it's the letter D. So if I scroll down in the list, I can find Sig T Theatre Second D. Now if I select this and place this down over here and then delete the other one, you can see that if I go back to the signal and update it by clicking on the Edit Properties tool, then clicking on the signal and clicking Update Now, that the D is now being displayed in the right display. Now, as you might expect, if I change this junction back here, the signal now displays L4. If you want to set this up yourself, you would do it the exact same way as with the feather signal. Only instead of putting down these feather markers, you would put down these theatre markers. Now let's talk about gantries. In this first example, I have a gantry here with a two-light signal hanging from it. This gantry is actually comprised of three parts. The first is this support, which I can move independently. The second is the gantry itself, which is a spline, which I can also move separately. And the third, of course, is the signal, which I can, of course, also move separately. In this specific case, this gantry only goes across one track. Now usually, if there's only one track that you want to put a signal on, you would use a mastered signal, like the ones we're using back here. But sometimes, if there isn't enough space beside the track, or if there's something in the way that would obscure the signal, single track gantries are used. Now let's move on a bit to these multiple track gantries. And this is what gantries are usually used for. If there are more than two tracks, so if you can't just put a signal on the left side and on the right side, you put the signals on top of the tracks. In this example, I'm actually using the same gantry spline as before because this spline actually comes with poles if you extend it. So let's demonstrate this. Now, if I place this spline over here and just do a short distance, you can see there are no poles or supports. But if I extend this a bit more, then you can see that one pole appears and then if I extend it a bit more, the second pole appears. Now, you might have already noticed a difference between this one and this one. And that is that this one is actually in the ground slightly. 
This is because the UK signals I'm using here are at a fixed height and this gantry is a bit too tall. So what I did to fix this is I just moved the gantry a bit down into the ground on this side, then I got the vertex height on this side and applied it to the other side. Now if we move over here, I just have another example of a gantry bridge. And that covers UK color light signals. Next, let's cover these. These are UK semaphore signals. Now, I know these look complicated, but they're actually very simple. Basically, a semaphore signal only ever has one arm that can either display a clear aspect or a danger aspect. So let's start with the first one. Here we have a dwarf signal. If the disc is turned so that the green light is showing, it's clear. If it's red, then it's not. A semaphore signal with a red arm is a home signal. This means that if the arm is down, so if it's displaying a danger aspect, you have to stop. The same as with the color light signals. If the arm is up and a green or blue light is showing, then you can continue. The next signal is a distant signal. This signal repeats the aspect of the next home signal. So even if this signal is displaying a danger aspect, so if the arm is down, you can still pass through it. The next signal is a combination of the two. This signal has a home signal, the red one, and at the same time, the same mast also has a distant signal for the next home signal. The next signal, which is this one, which has two home signals, is basically the semaphore version of a feather signal. This is used in junctions where the track is diverging to the left, so the left arm is a bit shorter. The next one is the exact same, only it's diverging to the right, so the right arm is a bit shorter. The next signal is the same as the ones before, only this one also has distant signals, so like with the feather signals from before, if the junction is set to go left, the left arm or arms will be up. If the junction is set to go right or straight, then the right arms will be up. The next signal is the exact same, only that the right arm is a bit shorter, so if the track is diverging to the right. And the signal after that is for a three-way junction, where you have a track going straight, you have one diverging to the left, and you have one diverging to the right. Now we've just got one more to go, which is the same as before, so the same three-way junction, only that this signal also has distant signals, displaying the aspect of the next home signal. Then if we continue a little, we see that there's this gantry signal. And as you might imagine, the left signal is for the left track and the right signal is for the right track. These track side objects are set up in such a way so that the gantry arm and the right signal are placed on the right track, even though they appear to be over the left track. The left signal is attached to the left track. Now if we move on, we've got the exact same thing, only that this signal also has distance signals. Now if we look over to the right, you can see that these basic three signals, so a home signal, a distance signal, and a combined home and distance signal, are also available as gantry signals. The actual gantry itself is a spline I've placed down. Now let's have a look at how to set up the feathering for these feathering semaphore signals. For this purpose, I've set up a little demonstration over here. We have this castle class here, in front of a feathered signal. At the moment, this signal's left home arm is up, which means that the next junction is set to go left. But the left side's distant signal, the yellow arm, is down. This means that the next home signal is displaying a danger aspect. And indeed, if we follow the track, the next home signal is displaying a danger aspect. Now, if I switch this junction, you can see that the same as with the feather signal, the right side now changes. And if we look down the track, you can see that I'm using the same assets that I was using for the color light feather signals. Beyond this, I've placed another feathered semaphore signal. This time the diverging track is the right one, so the right side of the signal is a bit shorter. Now, if I switch this junction to point straight, you can see that the left side lights up instead of the right side. And it's exactly the same way with the three-way junction signal. And that's how these complicated looking semaphore signals work in a rather simplistic way. So now let's move on to this. 
catenary or catenary, depending on where you are. The first thing to understand about catenary in trains is that there are many different catenary systems and assets that you can use. For this example, I've chosen to use the Woodhead catenary system, because the Woodhead catenary system in trains has a few good features that other systems don't have. For example, the fact that multi-track catenary splines have attachment points for each wire, making it a lot easier to make junctions. So, let's get started by examining the different types of catenary assets that I've used in this example. The first asset is the single track catenary wire. So, if I place this spline down over here, you can see it's only got wire for one track. That asset I've used for this long straight bit of single track. The next asset is the same thing, only that its poles are placed a lot more often. This is useful for curves because you need to keep the wire over the track so that the pantograph can make contact. So if you look down the wire like this, you can see that it's just cutting the curve a little bit. If the catenary poles were further apart, then the wire would cut the curve to such a degree that it would no longer make contact with the pantograph. The next asset I have used here, where this single track wire connects up to this three track wire, is a wire without posts. This is useful for a number of things. For example, here, where I want this to connect over up to here and I don't want posts to be overlapping and placed on top of the tracks. Another example is over here, where I've got this junction crossing over to the other tracks. Another place where this asset is useful is if you have so many tracks that you need to put down the supporting gantry yourself. So for example here, this gantry, which is supporting the catenary wire, is a separate spline that I've placed down because I've got so many tracks here that there wasn't an asset that had enough wires for this amount of track. The next catenary asset I'm using here is this two-track catenary asset. Over here I'm using a three-track catenary asset. As you can see, this is perfect for three tracks. Now to the example. So, I'm just going to place a bit of track here that I want to electrify. So, I'm just going to put in a gentle curve over here. The first catenary asset I'm going to use is the single track wire asset with the poles spaced out a bit. So, I'm going to go over here to where the track begins and I'm going to hold shift and add the spline over top of the track. Then I'm going to go over to the next track spline point. I'm going to hold shift again and place the spline. Now, if you look along the spline, you can see that the catenary wire is perfectly placed over the track. Now let's go over to the curve. Here I'm going to select the catenary wire that has the poles a bit closer together. Then I'm going to left click where this catenary spline ends. I'm going to go over to the next track spline point. I'm going to hold shift and left click here. Then for this last little straight bit, I'm going to select the spline with the more spaced out poles again, and I'm going to place this here as well. Now let's look at the catenary over here. You can see that it looks okay, but these poles are a bit too close, and this is because the spline over here is not straightened, whereas the track is. So the two don't match up exactly. So what you can do is with some assets, you can straighten the overhead wire spline, but with some you can't. So what I usually do is I go to the advanced tab and use the insert spline point tool and just left click where Trains has already placed these poles. Because for most overhead wire splines, poles are going to be placed either where the spline repeats or where spline points are. So now that I've placed the spline point here, you can see that it's not centered on the track. So I'm going to move it so that it is centered on the track. And in this case, for this curve, I'm actually going to move it a bit outwards, just so that there's more space for the catenary wire to go, so that it doesn't cut the corner of the curve as much. And now we've got catenary wire over the single piece of track. Next let's go over to double tracks. So let's make this track merge into a set of two tracks. So I'm going to place one track going along like this and another paralleling it. Now let's first place the two track catenary. So I'm going to select the two track catenary asset and this time I'm going to hold shift and click in the middle between the two tracks and I'm going to go over to the other end and I'm going to place it here. 
In this instance, I'm also using the asset that has the poles a bit more spaced out since this track is going straight. Now, if you look over here, you can see that the overhead wire is not exactly in the middle of the tracks. Now, since the wires are attached to this spline, you can't move them, you instead have to move the tracks so that they fit underneath the wires. So I'm actually going to move these tracks just a little bit closer. So this one over here, and this one over here. Now let's make the single track line merge into the two track line via a junction. So first I'm going to attach the tracks. And now let's put in the catenary. This time I'm going to select the one that has the poles a bit closer together, and I'm going to left click here, and I'm just going to place it roughly around up to here. This curve is so sharp that even with the poles closer together, this wire is still cutting the corner too much. So what I'll do is I'll put in another spline point in the overhead wire, roughly in the center between these two spline points, so over here, and I'm going to move this point to fit more over the tracks, so like this. Now if I look at the wire, I can see that it fits over the tracks much better. So now all that's left to do is to connect the wire from here over to this wire. So what I'll do here is I'll actually put in a spline point in the two track wire where the junction is. So I'm going to put it here. As you can see this has put in a pole over here and it's also put in these yellow markers here which is where we can attach the wire to. This is a thing that not all overhead wire systems have but it is part of the reason why I chose the wood head wire systems for this tutorial. So next I'm going to select the wire without poles and I'm just going to add the spline to this end first and then I'm going to left click on this marker here and as you can see the wire fits perfectly over to the other pole. And that covers the basics of UK color light signals, UK semaphore signals, gantry and catenary. So thank you for watching this video, I hope it was helpful.